Hello everyone and welcome to this week's main video. In this one, I'm going to be giving you a sort of detailed overview of how to use Inno Setup, which is a free application to allow you to create installers to install things like scripts, extensions, and plugins onto your user's computers. So I'm going to be going over sort of everything that you need to be able to do, uh, where you can access resources to learn more about it, and much more. Before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel, and down in the description you can check out my GitHub, follow us there for coding updates, and also down there check out Instagram where you can follow us for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so with the link in the description down below by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. And this comes with cool perks like Discord status, uh, VIP streams, and much more. And also in the description, make sure you check out the links for things like AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange, where I upload many other products and tools. All right, so you need to make an installer that installs files on Windows. I do recommend Inno Setup for like simplistic purposes. I know there are other custom methods out there to make more advanced installers, but for the basic sort of thing, this works and allows you to also sign your installer so that it's trusted uh, through Windows Server and Smart Defender and all that. So of course, first you'll want to download Inno Setup. Uh, they have uh, random sites, US and Netherland links. And then once you install it, uh, you can basically start creating a uh, installer file. I'm going to leave this installer file down below in the description. You can check out in the GitHub link uh, just so you can have a template to use and go off of that. I do have a little to-do list guide here. So once you've gotten the actual software, there is a guide, which I will also link to in the description. And this guide is sort of like, if you're familiar with my other videos, a scripting guide and things like that, which we, if we go to the index, we have access to all of the different objects and properties that we can have access to with Inno setup. And it also has a lot of uh, enumerated values, like common paths uh, to certain folders and all kinds of useful things that are essentially going to allow us to create any type of installer we need uh, with any kind of features that you might need as well. I personally kind of stick to my template uh, Inno file, uh, which allows me to very quickly create new installers for new products I'm working on, but I do need to start diving into this because there are a lot of cool things you can do here, which would be things like installing uh, certain versions or different features on different versions of After Effects, detecting if folders exist, and if they do, you can add fault files in there. You can also do lots of um, things like distribute multiple packs of files, like if you have a maybe an installer file or an extension that you want to take into the extensions folder, but then you also want to distribute uh, maybe preset packs into the documents or somewhere else. You can do all sorts of things and as you can see, it's quite expansive and has a lot of information inside of it. So this guide is super helpful if you really want to dive in and get detailed. Now before we go into some of the good stuff like how we can modify or what we need to modify, we need to understand what most of this means. So inside of your base Inno project, uh, you're going to have basic things uh, that are defined like your app name, the version of your app, who's publishing it, a URL if you need one, as well as the name of the exe file you're going to be outputting. Then under this setup area, we have a lot of useful stuff that is required to distinguish our installer from other installers, as well as to give it trust. Uh, first, I definitely recommend using sign tool. I will show you how you can set up your sign tool uh, for this. And if you're not familiar, you do need a sort of a certificate in order to sign your installer files, whether it be on Windows or Mac. And this will allow you to essentially be trusted and not have a bunch of pop-ups or antivirus things popping up saying your installer is not trusted on a user's computer. Uh, you can also have it be uninstallable, which is a neat feature if you need a user to quickly uninstall all these files. You have an app ID, which we will uniquely generate for each new product or installer file we create. And there's a tool built in that we will be using. And then we are just setting up some initial things that we've already defined here, like our app name, our app version, who publishes it, the app URL. Then we can also uh, set up an output directory. This is where the exe file is going to be saved to when we compile everything together. We can also set the output base file name, which is going to be, just be the name of your product. And then we just have some compression settings, which these defaults are fine for most purposes. 
Then we have icons. This actually allows you to use custom icons, which I haven't been doing recently, but this is really cool because you can just use your own .ico file, which is easy to convert like a JPEG or a PNG to that. And then instead of the sort of default installer image that this gives you, you can use your own custom images if that's what you want. You can also set up localization and have a languages section uh, where you basically link the language to a compiler file, which will basically allow you to have different languages for whatever uh, country your user is from. And then we sort of have the main meat. This is where we do the actual install type stuff. Under files, we have a source reference, which is going to reference a folder or a single file if you want. In this case, I have it referencing this uh, folder and then a wildcard asterisk after the last slash here, which indicates that I want to re reference this folder and all, that means all of the files within it. And then that's my source. My destination is going to be my common files 32 into my Adobe CEP extensions folder, where I'm going to create this folder called com.soundscrate, uh, which is just the ID. And that's going to be the destination. Now these flags are also important because if we set ignore version, uh, then when the user installs a new version of this extension, say with a new installer, it will be allowed to overwrite those basically. If you had this disabled, uh, sometimes you won't be able to overwrite the files. Recurse subdirectories allows this to recreate and search into the subdirectories of our source and destination. So if we have obviously like an assets or a J JS or a CSS folder, it's going to make sure it goes through those source folders that aren't within our root folder and recreate those. And of course, we also want to create all subdirectories along with that, which makes sure that it doesn't just post up all the or install all the root files that are in our extension folder. Then we can also define the install delete section, which is essentially referencing what we want to remove in the event that they run the uh, uninstall that we previously set up as well up here. So now that we know what all the different parts are, let's look at a few of the most useful things that we need to do when setting up a new installer, say if you're using this template. The first thing is sign tool. I'll include the link to this in the description, but you need to set up your sign tool with your certificate in order for your installer to be trusted. This is pretty simple to do. And what you want to do is basically just follow these instructions and they have specific instructions uh, that you can follow here, which apply for any certificate in any version. Under tools, uh, configure sign tools, this is where we will set it up. Uh, the first thing you want to do is go to your Windows 10 kits. In this version of the documentation, it's a little bit wrong because this is using a super old, this might even be Windows XP or Windows 7. Um, but what you want to do is reference your Windows 10 folder. Uh, you can see here we have C program files 86, Windows kits 10. So let's go to that folder. C program files 86, uh, Windows kits we're in windows 10 we're going to go to the bin and then you need to go ahead and choose one of these versions uh, these are just different versions i believe of the different tools that come with windows and this is where we're going to find sign tools in my case i'll just use the newest version and then we we'll want to make sure we are on the right architecture for our computer in modern times most computers are going to be x64 then we should be able to scroll down here and see we have sign tool.exe. So we can copy this path, add a new sign tool. We could just call this test sign tool. Okay. Then we need to give it the command. This is going to be our path. And I believe we need to put it here in quotations. So say quote the path here. And we need to also include sign tool exe and then what commands do we need to give it we need to say sign and then all of this information so it's kind of hard to see here because this window is so small let's go ahead and make sure so here we just need to fill in our own details so after we have our path to our sign tool.exe file we can just use the arrow keys here to navigate better we're going to say sign with a file as the argument there 
and then you need to link to the actual path to your PFX uh, file. Then we need to give it the time flag and give it a link here to an authentication website. And this is important so that it actually can access where it needs to authenticate your certificate. And then you finally need to give it your password and then this command here. Then all you have to do is give under setup sign tool equals your like test sign tool command that you named it. And uh, you can go access them here again and see test sign tool and uh, edit it, remove it, or whatever you need. And once again, this is important so that you are trusted on other computers using your certificate. Next, you have the app ID or the GUID. This is something you need to uniquely create for each and every installer, otherwise it will think that they are the same installer. The way we do this is by highlighting between the, the brackets and to the end bracket. You don't want to include the first bracket, so like this. And then, once we highlight that part, we will go to uh, Tools, Generate GUID, yes. And this would simply generate a new GUID. You can generate as many of these as you want. It's going to be unique every single time. And uh, this will just be how you differentiate your EXE from another one. And then I also have here just discussing, you know, the uninstall file and the install files, which we already kind of went over in here. Uh, just as a reminder, you can give it a folder if you just wanted to copy the folder itself. Or if you want to copy all the files within a folder, you need to terminate it uh, with the slash and then give it a wildcard asterisk, which says all the files within this folder uh, will be part of the source in this case. And the last step is to compile. So we can make sure our sign tool is set up correctly and we can go to build, compile, or hit control F9. And I'm not going to show my compiler output here. I'm going to actually just make sure it's gone because that does have my... It does have your important information like uh, your sign tool and your certificate password, uh, which is basically your private key. So uh, you will get a message that says finished if it was successful. And you're going to see compressing all of those files that you have in those folders. And they're going to be compressed into the installer. And you should get a green message saying finished and maybe some command prompts popping up, which is the sign tool at work. And then, of course, this will be saved to your output location. You chose your output directory and you'll now have... Once we go to that folder, you will now have your exe file exported using whatever the name you gave it was. And as you can see, you're also going to get this default uh, image unless you specify it here in icons. And that's going to do it for this week's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's all about Inno setup and how to create installers for Windows, which is useful for scripts, extensions, and plugins. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out all the links for the things that we went over today. And make sure down there you follow us on GitHub, uh, where you can check out this ISS or Inno setup file. Follow us there for coding updates and in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of the Discord server, make sure you come and join to help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the description down below by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. And this comes with cool perks like Discord status, badges, weekly polls, and much more. And also in the description, check out links to all of the uh, AE scripts, Adobe Exchange, and Gumroad to see some tools and stuff that I make. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.